Hello again, friends. If you're new here, I continually forget to introduce myself, but for the record, my name is Carla and I'm an artist and teacher from Canada, here to show you that drawing flowers can be easy and approachable. So now that that is out of the way, in this video, I'll walk you through my start to finish process to floral ink drawing with the hopes that you can draw along with me or just watch and absorb some helpful drawing techniques that you can apply to your own practice. Before we dive into drawing today, I thought it would be beneficial to take a step back and talk a bit about art supplies and then go over a few basic floral drawing techniques that are easy to implement but really elevate your drawings. So let's talk about supplies. There are so many brands on the market that it can be a bit intimidating to choose which ones to use or to just go to the store and pick out something blindly. I thought I'd share with you a few of my favorite items and hopefully take a bit of the guesswork out of things for you. The first thing I like to have on hand when I'm drawing florals is a pencil. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Well, to be honest, there are so many pencils on the market that it can be a bit confusing. I like to use an HB pencil, HB standing for hard black. I can go into more details in another video about this, but for now, the main thing that you need to know is that with an HB pencil, the lead isn't too dark or too soft, which would mean it would smear around a lot. With an HB pencil, you can use light pressure and still see the lines. And it's quite easy to erase, but also doesn't smudge too easily. Look for an HB pencil or a higher 2H or 4H pencil, as the lead can get nice and sharp and make crisp lines. Otherwise, I like using a HB mechanical pencil just for the ease of not having to sharpen it and avoid that extra mess of pencil shavings. The next thing I like to have on hand is a good quality eraser. Please don't reach for one of those pink school erasers. Most will strip away the ink lines and often leave behind marks on your page. I like the Sumo Grip Eraser by Secure of America as it works really well without lifting away too much of the ink off the page. However, if you want the best of the best, try to get your hands on one of these kneadable erasers. This one is by Faber-Castell and I'm sure I've had it for at least a decade. They're great because you can use the dabbing motion to lift the pencil lines off your page instead of a back and forth rubbing motion. And the best part, they don't leave behind eraser crumbs that you have to clean up afterwards. Okay, so the next thing that you'll want to have is a good quality fine tip pen. I always reach for the Secura of America Micron pens over other brands that I've tried. They seem to last forever and have a really uniquely shaped tip that allows you to get different widths of lines by just angling the pen in different ways or applying more pressure. The tip is also quite firm, so they work well on textured paper without losing their shape. Regardless of which pen you use, I recommend storing them with the tip end facing down. This will help the ink stay flowing in the right direction as they're being stored and prevent them from drying out. This goes for any wet drawing tool like a ballpoint pen or fountain pen or marker. Just store them so that the ink always stays flowing in the direction that you use it. Now the last thing that you need to have on hand is some quality paper. Lately I've been gravitating toward cold press watercolor paper as it has a slight bit of texture and holds the ink lines really well. I also like having the texture on my page because it adds an interesting element to my floral drawings where none of your lines can be too perfect, just like in nature. Fabriano makes a really nice pad of cold pressed paper that works well with ink, and if you do decide to add color to your drawings with watercolor afterwards, it also holds wet mediums really well. You can buy these in pads of 50 for a pretty reasonable price as well, which I like, and they detach nicely from the pad without pulling too hard. I also recently started using a large Moleskine art book, which has watercolor paper in it. I love that it has a hard cover to protect your work and this elastic band on one side to hold the pages down while you work. I also really love the feel of the paper within this book. It's nice and thick with a slight bit of texture and you can use it with wet mediums as well. If you're not sure what paper to buy, I'd suggest going for a mixed media or a watercolor paper as it will hold the ink well without smearing and usually the paper of mixed media or watercolor pad is much more thicker than just regular sketching paper. And just so you know, I'll list and link everything that I recommend here in the video description. Okay, so now that we've chatted a bit about the supplies that I use, let's dive into a few floral drawing basics. 
I want to show you a few really simple things that you can draw with a few easy steps that add big impact to your floral drawings. Let's grab our sketching pencil, eraser, paper, and a fine line pen, and I'll show you two simple ways to draw leaves. I'll sketch out a general shape here of a leaf with a pencil first. Just a main vein and two curved lines that converge at the tip. Now the first type of leaf that I want to show you is one I like to call an S-curved leaf. So I'm going to come in and trace along the main vein with two parallel lines that come together at the tip. Then I'll draw a curved line on either side of the vein that comes together at a point toward the tip. Next, I'm going to start adding in veins to the leaf. But the shape that I'm going to use to draw them is a subtle S-curve like this. I'm going to fill in the entire length of both sides with these S-curve lines. Now, they're looking a little bit cartoonish, so to add a bit more detail and dimension here, I'm going to add in some more lines. Some of them can be broken or just partial lines, concentrated toward the center at the main vein of the leaf and toward the outer edges of the leaf. This helps to add the look of a curved shape to the leaf. Keep adding these lines all along the length of both sides until it's filled in and we're done the S-curve leaf. Next, let's work on a type of leaf that I like to call the parallel lines leaf. I like using this style for leaves that are a bit smaller as they're really easy to draw and you don't have to worry about adding too many tiny details. Start in the same way as the S-curved leaf with the outline of the main vein and the outer edges of the leaves. Here, I'm doing a cluster of three leaves. Once you have the outline in place of the center vein and the outlines of each leaf shape, we're going to come in with some quick lines stemming from the center of each leaf to the outer edges on an angle. Just fill in each side of the leaf with a row of these parallel lines until the whole leaf is filled in. This is a really easy way to draw a leaf that still looks really pretty intricate once it's done. Take a look at this recent drawing that I did. Can you see all the different S-curve and parallel line leaves that I added to this piece? All right, so the next thing that I want to show you is a few basic petal techniques that we're going to use later on in our floral drawing. One of the main shapes that you'll see recurring is this really simple curved leaf shape we can add a lot of interest to each petal by just changing up this one simple shape. Watch how I add a fold here and some rolled up edges on this third petal shape. Then let's add a few simple detail lines. Just some quick lines toward the base of each petal and maybe a few lines where you can imagine a shadow may be. The next thing I'll show you here is a really simple shape that I use to draw the center of many different types of flowers. If you look up close at the stamen or center of a flower, you will often see several different parts that are quite intricate. 
The neat thing is that you can capture the overall essence of the stamen or center of the flower by drawing some really basic shapes like these circles in a cluster together, or these rounded diamond shapes, or these ovals on a little stick. Truly the easiest things to draw. I'll show you how they come together in a peony flower later. And here let's draw a little windflower so you can see how things can come together. Start by drawing the center of the flower by just drawing a bunch of tiny circles clustered together in a larger circle shape. Just keep adding little circles until the entire shape is filled in. Then let's add some of our really basic petal shapes stemming out from this cluster of circles. Let me show you how easy it is to add movement to this flower by changing the shapes of the petals. See how I added a fold and some curved edges here? And to really make the petals pop off the page, we're adding detail lines close to the semen or center of the flower and under those folds or curves where the shadow might naturally fall. We'll practice this technique more in the composition we're about to create together. And with that said, why don't we dive into drawing a floral composition made out of the techniques that we just practiced. I've got my sketching pencil and I'm drawing a really quick general outline of where I want my flower and leaf shapes to be. Starting with two large blooms in the center which will become open peony blooms. I'm going to add in some outlines of leaves to the bottom of this composition varying in size for each leaf. I want the main focus of this drawing to be on the peonies, so keeping them as the largest element and just adding in leaves and smaller flowers to frame them will keep them front and center. You'll see I added a couple lines to the top right of the composition that will eventually become lavender. Now I'm working on adding the general outline of where I want some anemone or wildflower blooms to be. Now let's come in and add a few more guidelines to follow for the peony flowers. This will help us stay on track when we're adding the petals and the small details that will make up the center of each flower. I don't always add this much detail to my drafts, but I know it can be quite daunting to just jump in blindly with ink when you're starting out, so please feel free to add as much detail in pencil as you feel like you may need. The main thing that I want you to focus on is finding the outer edges of each shape that makes up each individual element in your drawing. So if you're drawing a peony bloom, try to identify the general outline of each individual petal and map it out on the page. I find when I'm looking at a source image or a real bloom, if I almost trace the edges with my eyes as I draw, I'm able to find the parts that make up each flower or leaf easier than just looking at the overall thing as one large shape. Remember to keep your line work light so there won't be any indents on your page and it will be easier to remove the draft lines afterwards. Now you'll see that I've come in with my eraser. Just dab some of those lines away to soften up the pencil a bit before we dive in with pen. One of the main reasons that I do this is because the less pencil that your pen has to draw over, the longer the pen will last. Graphite residue can collect on the tips of your pens and make your lines just not as crisp. Okay, so grab your pen and let's move on to the second step, which is inking the outlines of this composition. We're not going to focus on any details here, just the outlines of each shape. Start 
start drawing the center disc of each peony bloom. Start with a small cluster of these almost diamond-like shapes in the center. Don't worry too much of the placement or how many you add, just try to create a circular cluster. Next, let's add in some small oval shapes in a halo around the cluster we just drew. You could layer them and draw them on different angles. Again, don't worry too much about the placement as long as you fill in a halo or circle around the center. These are the anthers where the pollen is and we're going to connect them back to the center with a quick line which is called a filament. These parts together make up the stamen or the center of the peony. So all you want to do to complete this part of the flower is make sure that these ovals are all connected back to the center disc with the line. I'm going to do this whole process a second time in the second flower here. The diamond shapes clustered together in the center, followed by the halo of anthers surrounding it, and then connecting each anther back to the center disc with a line for the filament. Since we're talking about the center of these flowers, why don't we start working on the center or stamens of the next largest element in this piece, the windflower or the Japanese anemone. Just like when we worked on the beginning of this tutorial, we're going to draw the stamens in a cluster of tiny circles together within the larger, larger circle shape. I find it easy to make a ring of tiny circles around the outer border and then just fill it in with circle shapes afterwards. Okay, so now that the centers of each flower are in place, let's start adding in some simple petals. Let's start with some regular petal shapes along the top here, like we practiced earlier. And as I work my way around toward the bottom, I'll start adding in some folds to the tips. This will help create the look that the flower is slightly angled toward the left. Now, some varieties of peony flowers have several layers of petals. So let's just work our way around layering in petals behind what we just drew. The petals in the lower layers will be bigger and wider, so keep this in mind as you draw. You can add dips and ridges to the petals or add folds and bends in some of the spaces as, as you want. Play around with the shapes you draw and don't worry too much about consistency. They don't need to be the same. Variances in the shapes and folds and sizes will make the flowers look more lifelike and unique. So now that we're done drawing the peony blooms, let's work on the windflowers the same way we drew them when we practiced. Just a regular petal shape stemming from the center of the flower outwards. Watch here as I create a few petals folded up toward the center of the bloom. And at the left hand side we can draw one of the flowers but on a bit of a side view so you don't see all of the petals. So the outlines of the flowers are looking good so let's move on to the next largest element of this piece which would be the leaves. I'm going to start by tracing out the center vein of each of the leaves I sketched out in our draft design.
Once I'm done drawing the veins, I'll start adding in the jagged curved line for the outer edges of each leaf, making sure that they converge together in a pointed tip. I find breaking down the process this way and drawing each individual element together at the same time makes the process easier. Usually I start with the largest element, maybe one of the biggest blooms, and work my way down to the smaller elements, or the smallest details. You might have noticed that I added a few folded edges to some of the leaves here by just adding a bit of a dip with a straight line along one edge, and a jagged edge down the other side of this. Don't worry too much about the lines that you're drawing for the edges of the leaves. Some can have more ridges than others, some edges can appear more smooth. This will just end up looking more like it does in nature. Okay, so the outline of all of the leaves is done, so let's move on to the final few smaller elements, like these few sprigs of lavender and the little buds I added in. For the lavender, just add a few clusters of some oval shapes running down the stem like I'm doing here. We'll outline the last sprig of lavender at the bottom of the composition and then move on to the outline of the stems of the windflowers and the last few buds. Now, I didn't have to add in these last small touches, but I always find having some contrast between the larger elements that I want as the main focal point and some smaller leaves or buds helps to add a lot of interest to the piece and move your eye throughout the piece. The next step you want to take is to grab your kneadable eraser and get rid of any leftover pencil lines before we move on. We don't need any of those draft lines on the page at this point, so it's best to just get rid of them. So we've already finished the first two steps, which were drawing a rough draft in pencil, followed by inking the outline, so let's move on to the third and final step, which is adding in the details. This is where the piece really starts to come to life. You'll notice here that I've started drawing some really quick lines stemming from the center of the first peony bloom outwards, filling in about the first third of the petals. I'm not doing anything fancy here, just some quick lines extending outwards. What this does is start to create a bit of depth here, making it look like the petals are curved downwards a bit toward the stamen, creating a subtle shadow. As I work around all of the petals of this peony, what I'm doing is looking for any area that I think there might be a shadow falling. For example, anywhere a petal is overlapping another petal, I'll draw a few lines on the bottom petal so it looks like there is shadow created from the top petal on the bottom one. I'll also add a few subtle short lines under anywhere I've created a fold or bend in the petals, again to create that look of a shadow. You'll notice that I'm not filling in the whole petal. I truly feel like less is more here. Keep your lines simple and quick, just as a slight indication of a shadow. The more you practice, the easier it will get for you to know where to place the lines within each flower. Let me speed up things a bit here as I move on to the second flower. If you're drawing along with me, you can always pause the screen or just come back and watch again later. I've been toying with the idea of providing a downloadable template that you can follow along with, like, I don't know, maybe an outline of the drawing that you can trace and add your own detail lines to. If this sounds like something you'd find helpful, let me know in the comments and I'll make that happen for videos going forward. 
I've only been sharing tutorials here for a short time, so any ideas on how I can serve you better are totally welcome. So you can see here that I moved on to the small windflowers that are at the top of this composition. Just like in the beginning of this tutorial, and again where we are filling in the detailed lines in the peony bloom, keep the detail lines concentrated to where the shadow would naturally be created in the petal based on where there are curves in the leaf or in the lower parts toward the stamen. Let's finish off this side view windflower with just a few lines concentrated toward the stamen and then we can move on to the next biggest element in this composition which are the leaves. So we've already went through the step by step on how to draw the main two types of leaves in this composition, the S-curve leaf and the parallel lines leaf, so we can jump right into starting the line work. You'll see here that I'm working on an S-curve leaf. I'm adding in those subtle S-curve lines and then filling in any spaces with some broken lines to add depth to the leaf. Since we've already walked through drawing these leaves in the first part of this tutorial, I'm not going to linger too much here. Let's speed things up so you can see what a big impact this simple line work adds to a piece. I'm following the same S-curve process to fill in the larger leaves and the smaller leaves I'm filling in with the same parallel lines process we did previously as well. All we have left to do now is fill in some tiny details in the smaller leaves at the top of this page. Instead of filling in the entire shape with lines, I'm just going to add a few quick short lines concentrated toward the base of each leaf toward where they meet the stem. This just adds a bit of depth without having to do too much line work. I'm adding in some lines in the leaves behind the sprigs of lavender and I'm also going to add just a few shadow lines to the base of the little buds and then we're pretty much done with this piece. There you have it. A composition made of peonies, windflowers, S-curve leaves, and parallel line leaves. I hope after this video you're able to see how you can take a few simple drawing techniques and apply them in the right way to achieve a really beautiful floral drawing. Thanks so much for taking the time today to watch, and until next time, bye bye